Everybody knows Harry Potter. The multi-billion franchise has seven books, eight movies, and the world's greatest MLG video behind it. You're a scrub lord, Harry. You fucking what, mate? But, aside from that, it's also a huge fucking titan when it comes to the merchandising industry. You name it, Harry Potter made merch. There's Harry Potter Lego, keychains, pajamas, sweets, a, a fucking Deathly Hallows cheese board for some reason, and who could forget the Nimbus 2000 that accidentally functioned as a fucking vibrator. The point that I'm trying to make is that Harry Potter is an unstoppable force in the toy and collectible industry. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about Harry Potter's spiritual younger brother, The Hunger Games. With the release of The Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I have been really getting back into The Hunger Games franchise. And upon doing so, I've noticed something. Despite sharing a pretty similar audience and vibe as Harry Potter, the Hunger Games is nowhere near as big of a merchandising wonderland. In today's video, I want to discuss why that is. I want to talk about the failed commercialization of The Hunger Games. Do you get it? Because I, I said the title of the video uh, in the video. It's, it's, like, it's like when they say the name of the film in the film. You know, like, uh, uh, I am Morbius or, or we are Avengers Endgame. <laughs> the first reason for The Hunger Games' inability to be merchandisable is its causal inability to be toyetic. But you're probably sat there thinking, what the fuck does toyetic mean? Well, I have far too many collectibles in my room, and because of that, I know what toyetic means, so allow me to tell you. Wikipedia defines toyetic as, toyetic is a term referring to the suitability of a media property, such as a cartoon or movie, for merchandising tie-in lines of licensed toys, games, and novelties. I had to read that one off the monitor, guys. I'm sorry. I really did try it. Like, I really did try and remember that fucking long-ass definition, but I just couldn't get it. <laughs> Harry Potter is inherently toyetic. I mean, cloaks, wands, plushies, action figures. The franchise is simply oozing with ways to get kids to play Harry Potter, whether that be by dressing as a student of Hogwarts, or making them play with action figures and creating their own stories with Harry, Ron, and the rest of the characters. To give another example of an inherently toyetic franchise, so that I'm not just comparing The Hunger Games to Harry Potter or video, Doctor Who. Doctor Who is simply laced with toyetic things. Sonic screwdrivers, psychic paper, vortex manipulators, TARDIS play sets, anything in that show can, can be made into a toy. And there's other things that can be licensed to kids that are sort of toyetic in a way, like blankets and plushies and stuff. Fucking mugs, for God's sake. M maybe not this one. I don't think this one is uh, as acceptable for children, but you get my point. If it exists, they made a product of it with Doctor Who on it, so mouth-breathing Whovians like myself will buy it. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's circle back to Hunger Games really quickly, because it really lacks that toyetic, like, function, I think which baffles me. The franchise has potential to be toyetic, and people have tried. Merch is out there. Think Mockingjay pins or Katniss Everdeen costumes from when Catching Fire was coming out. Even action figures of Katniss and Peter are out there. The merch exists, I just don't think it was taken on as well as Harry Potter or Doctor Who, like I mentioned earlier, which gave the idea that it's not quite as good for merchandising as those other franchises. But why was this? Plain, plain and simple, it, it's fucking marketing. It, it's always marketing. Take a look at today. We see Harry Potter everywhere. You cannot escape that fucking round glass, scar-having dickhead. Like, wherever you go, you will see a product. The Hunger Games doesn't quite have that. This is definitely to do with demographics. The Hunger Games and Harry Potter have very different demographics. Harry Potter was very clearly marketed towards kids, whereas the Hunger Games opted to go more of marketing towards teenagers. Obviously, kids are stupid little mouth breathers who are going to buy anything with Daniel Radcliffe's stupid little face on it, and therefore, they're going to stock more Harry Potter stuff because it's always selling, because children have no concept of what is good merchandise and what is a good franchise, and I just spilled tea on my crotch. <laughs> oh, it's all over my fucking chair. Ma never recording a video where I hold a fucking liquid again. <laughs> that marketing strategy simply doesn't work with teenagers. They're not going to go to a fly like shit when they see a Josh Hutchison shirt. It's not going to sell like hotcakes, or it wouldn't have in 2014. Nowadays, because of the FNAF movie, that, that motherfucker is white boy of the month. And I get it, I really get it, but you lot are jumping on all these, oh, Josh, fucking Josh Hutchison's so hot. I've been a real fella. Everyone knew he was a bad bitch since Peter, and you out here going, oh, Mike Schmidt's so attractive. Get fucking real, Baker. Honestly, what has my life become? I am gatekeeping Josh Hutchison 
with T on my crotch. So we've covered an inability to be toyetic, an unimpressive marketing campaign, and a disinterested audience as reasons to why The Hunger Games is nowhere near as commercialized as other franchises. But there are some other reasons that I want to dive into. Namely, the type of merch. Harry Potter has affordable merch, you know, because it's toys for kids. Hunger Games went a completely different route. They went with NECA, who make, like, collectibles, so it wasn't really toys. It was collectible, like, props and action figures and such. But while that is very cool, and I think a lot better than going with the toy route, it also created the problem of merch being very expensive. I mean, the average teenager is not going to be able to afford a $30 figure when they don't even have a job. But a kid sure as hell can goad their parent into buying them a $2 fucking Harry Potter mystery mini or something while they're at the fucking checkout line of an Asda. My final reason as to why Hunger Games merch just didn't sell is some of the weird collabs they opted to do. Because I'm not going to lie, they, they were just plain stupid. A capital-themed beauty collection? Why would we want capital makeup sets? We root for Katniss in the films. And don't get me wrong, having merch of the the villains, I guess, in a sense, it's cool, you know, and it's interesting that they did that, it's just what they chose to do, makeup sets, I don't think it was a smart choice, I mean, you certainly aren't going to be using it to pull off any extravagant looks like the Capitol do, are you, especially not out in public, actually, we are talking about Hunger Games fans here, that, that we are a weird bunch, it is likely that if someone owned this makeup set, they did pull off some weird looks in public. This isn't even key in here anymore, man. I've been recording for so long, this is literally water. I just wanted to keep up the illusion so that the continuity makes sense. I have just broken it by telling you, but funny. I also want to take a look at the Subway collab they did. Bold can be standing up for what you believe in. Bold can be testing your limits and defying all odds. And now, Bold can be found at Subway. Fiery footlongs, a revolution in bold taste. Sizzling subs like the new Sriracha Chicken Melt. Drizzled in our own signature Sriracha. Made with a select blend of chili peppers for our boldest flavor yet. Get yours and get to theaters November 22nd for The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Subway. Be bold. Eat fresh. How did it not clock to anyone in the several, like, stages of people that this advert and promotion would have definitely had to go through that maybe selling overstuffed calorific sandwiches with the branding of a series that focuses on the starving and impoverished and the exploitation of said people was a conflict of interest. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense, I'm going to be honest. And I brought this up with my friends when discussing this, and he was like, oh, well... It's like capital sandwiches. They're very indulgent. They eat a lot of food. You know, there's the scene in Catching Fire where they're like, oh, I'm throwing up so I can eat more food so I never get full. And, you know, that was a valid point until you consider that they are, they are marketing them as like fiery sandwiches, as in girl on fire, as in Curtis Everdeen, as in the, the, the fucking starving District 12 girl. Yeah, let's sell a fucking stuffed sandwich with her as the main focus, as the main bit of marketing, that's that's not that's not fucking like a conflict of interest. That that definitely makes sense. But with that, that's all I really have to say for this video. Honestly, it's a shame we didn't see the Hunger Games used to its full potential when it comes to being toyetic and merchandised and all the other buzzwords I've said today. Hopefully, with the release of Songbirds and Snakes and Josh Hutchinson being the white boy of the month again, thanks to FNAF, we might see some new stuff get released. I certainly hope we do. Particularly, I'd like a Katniss Everdeen hand puppet that accidentally functions as a flashlight to go with my Nimbus 2000. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, you know, all the buzzword call to action things that all the YouTubers say. Uh, tell me what you thought of this video. Um, w was I serving? Was I slaying? Because I, I don't know, I think I was, give I think I was giving a, a very serious YouTuber video essayist with a little mug of tea. Uh, I, think I, I think I was slaying. Also, I had a Hunger Games DVD back there. Can't even fucking see it because the mic arm is in the way. Um, complete waste of setting up. Right, enough waffling. I want to end this video and go and watch Songbirds and Snakes now because I have a booking literally right after this video comes out. I'm going to leave you with a classic that's aged like fine wine more recently now that it's been brought into the mainstream. 
It's it's the fucking whistle video. Of course, I'm using the whistle video as the end card. Come on, like how how could I not? Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we start real slow. You just put your lips together.